Quickly now, let's get you back to Port au Prince and, and CNN's Jason Carroll. And, and Jason, good, you still have uh, Laura Blank with you from World Vision. Uh, I, I'm really interested in where the aid, the World Vision aid, is being housed right now. I, I want to know where the bottlenecks are and what the plan A, B, C, D, and E, if necessary, is to get around the bottlenecks and, and get the aid out to the people who really need it. A lot of questions there, so uh, let me just sort of like start setting sure, the sure. tone in terms of where, where, where we're trying to go with here in terms, of, in terms of aid. So let's talk about, first of all, the bottleneck. A lot of folks trying to get international aid into Port-au-Prince. Tell me about the special challenges you face just getting the aid here. Well, one of the biggest challenges for us right now is the lack of fuel. You can see long lines everywhere at every gas station you go to in the city, traffic jams, hour-long waits, people bringing even small containers to get any kind of gasoline they can. Yesterday, uh, we were told that there was an estimate of two to three days left of fuel in the city, and that was yesterday. We've actually had to ask our staff from the Dominican Republic to bring in gasoline for us, sometimes on a daily basis. And how is that being done? You caravan that in, I would Ex assume. Exactly. We bring it in on big trucks, and we have a tanker at the office where we can fill up our trucks. But without fuel, we obviously can't get anywhere to begin the distributions. And, to, and just explain for us, and, and in just some basic terms, how an organization such as yourself, with so many challenges out there on the streets, how do you begin then to set up the office and distribute and get it to where you need to go? Well, I think one of the things that benefits us is that World Vision's been in Port-au-Prince and in Haiti for more than 30 years. So we have an infrastructure, we have several hundred staff, we know the local governments and we know who to talk to, and I think that's a big benefit. And then to begin the assessment and make sure that we're not duplicating our efforts, there are two things that we do. One is that all of the non-governmental organizations that are working here are meeting on a daily basis to discuss all of the sectors. Those are things like water and health. And that's every morning. And, Tony, um, what they're basically doing is, Laura will tell you about this, but they meet every morning with a U.N. Uh, a UN organization good, good. Um, called OCHA. And they're the ones who are basically coordinating all of these relief organizations to make sure you guys aren't duplicating in terms of how you're distributing the aid, yes? Exactly. Everyone's responsible, and some different groups are often in charge of a certain sector. So one group may be in charge of water, and then we, we have representatives who work with them. Another may be in charge of health. So each morning we're talking about an update, getting new facts, and trying to figure out how we can best work together. But the other thing we do is we don't go into a camp unannounced. We yes. go in days before, we talk to them, and we say, has anyone else already been here just to make sure that someone else isn't already planning a distribution and that way we can start to work with the people find out their needs and then get to them quickly and, and another example you know this makeshift camp that's sort of behind us here tony where we are um laura was telling me before that what they do is when they get to some of these camps sometimes there's a de facto leader there someone who's uh, an elder or a pastor so sometimes what you do is you approach those sort of tent or camp leaders talk to them about some of the special needs that men or women might have as well before you head in there, right? Exactly. A lot of times these people are finding and creating camps in their neighborhood. So just like you know your neighbors, they know theirs. And their family and friends, they may come together. It may be a pastor or another leader. So when we go in, we want the people in the camp to feel empowered to help us with the distribution. So they often help us coordinate as we're doing the food distribution or water, help us to organize, help us to register the family so we can start building some consistency with them. We really rely on the camps to help us with a little bit of structure. Okay, finally, I just want to wrap it up here, but I also want to make sure that in terms of that challenge that you're facing in terms of getting fuel and gas, are you, are you worried that you're not going to be able to get what you need in order to keep doing what you're doing? Yeah, it's very worrisome because we, we've, we've requested uh, that the Haitian government help us to try to work on some workarounds to bring more fuel into the country. We're also going to continue to rely on our staff in the Dominican Republic. Uh, we do have our camps that we're working with are fairly close to the office, but we certainly can't walk these supplies there. So we need gas okay. to be able to do the relief work this time. Jason, understood. I've got a question. Right, don't let her go. Don't let, Jason, don't yes. let her go. Don't let her go. I've got a question. Uh, from the grid work that they're doing, can Laura tell us from the airport south, from the port uh, sort of east, are they five miles into that grid? Are they 10 miles into that grid? How far are they into Port-au-Prince in terms of aid and supplies? Okay, well, I can tell you straight off the bat, he was asking where are you in terms of aid and supplies, where are you sort of housed, and, and, what, and what specific parts of the city are you um, responsible for? 
We are housed uh, not too far from here. Actually, it's a neighborhood called Petchenville. There are two neighborhoods that we're focusing on, Petchenville and Canapé Vert. They're neighborhoods that we've worked in for a long time anyway, so we know a lot of the local staff and the people so, so there. So just to give a point of reference, north, south, east of Port-au-Prince? It's slightly north in the northern part of Port-au-Prince, okay. and that's where we're going to focus our operations. We've got three distributions scheduled today. We've been distributing since uh, Saturday. Okay, so um, yep. I hope that yep. was able that to helps. answer some of yeah, your questions helps. there, Tony. And, uh, and, and you understand sort of how the city is broken up into sections, how OCHA is doing this, so these various relief organizations aren't stepping on each other and getting too yeah. much aid to one spot and not enough to another. But still, obviously, a lot of challenges in terms of getting fuel. And, and for some organizations, not World Vision, but for others, just in terms of getting here, right. still a challenge in some ways. Terrific. Uh, my, and my thanks to, to Laura, if you would, for me, Jason, and, and thank you as well, uh, Jason Carroll and Port-au-Prince.